In this lesson, we'll learn about flow control. If statements allow programs to make decisions based on whether a certain test condition is true. Every if that you start must end with an end statement. So let's look at a simple if statement first. Here's the general outline for an if statement and here's the corresponding flow diagram. So our code's marching along and then we come to an if statement and we check to see if a certain test condition is true. If it is true, say 4 greater than 3, these commands will be executed. If it's false, say 3 greater than 4, these commands will be bypassed. We can make more sophisticated if statements with if else statements. In an if else statement, one set of commands will be executed if the test condition is true, the other set will be executed if it is false. In either case, notice how only one set of commands is executed. So if it's true, all the commands between if and else will be executed. If the test condition is false, everything between the else and end will be executed. We can make even more sophisticated if statements with if else if statements. So let's see how these work. We come to our test condition A. If it's true, we'll execute the first set of commands and then our code will march on. So over here on the left with the code, if test condition is A is true, we'll do all the commands between the if and the else if statements and then we'll just jump to the end bypassing everything else. However, if A is false, we'll test to see if B is true. If B is true, we'll do the second set of commands and then our code will continue. If it's false, we'll keep going down the list of test conditions until we find one that is true. If we find that none of them are true, we'll go down and execute the third set of commands or the last set of commands after the else. Notice how even if test condition A and B are true, we'll only execute one set of commands. So even if A and B are true, we come to A, it's true, we'll execute the first set of commands and bypass the commands after B even though they're true. Okay. We can have if statements within if statements and these are called nested if statements. So let's see how one example works. So if this test condition is true, we'll do everything between the if and else. If it's false, we'll do everything between the else and end. So let's assume that test condition A is true. Then we come to another if statement. Is test condition B true? If it is, we'll do everything between if and else here. So if it's true, we'll execute the first set of commands, and then we'll jump to the end, and we'll execute the third set of commands. And then our code will continue. If test condition A is true, and we come to B, and B is false, we'll do everything between the else and end right here. And then we'll go execute the third set of commands. If test condition A was initially false, we'll only do the fourth set of commands because we'll skip everything between the if and else and only do the commands between else and end. Notice that there are two ifs and two ends. The first if is completed by the last end. The second if is completed by the second to last end. Also notice that if test condition A is true, regardless of what test condition B is, the third set of commands will be executed. Finally, notice how indentation of these if statements helps keep track of the various commands inside the if statements. Let's look at a simple if statement. x is equal to 5. If x is greater than 4, hello will be displayed and then we reach the end of the if statement. Then we display the text by. Is x greater than 4? That's true, so we will do the commands, execute the commands inside the if statement. What if it was not true? What if we said x is less than 4? We see that only by 
is executed. Because this is false, x is less than 4 is false, so we skip all the commands between the if and the end. We can make this code a little more sophisticated by adding an else. So now we'll issue some commands. If we'll issue some commands if x less than 4 is false. So x less than 4, that's false. So we do everything between the else and the end. We display high, and then we display by. We can also change the value of x within the if statement. We'll say x is equal to 3, and then we will display the value of x. Sorry, sometimes it takes a couple of executions of the m file to get it to work. So we see here that x is equal to 5. This is false, so we go down and execute these set of commands. We'll display high. x will now get the value 3. We'll display by, and then we'll display the value of x, which is now 3. Notice that even though x has changed to 3 here, when this test condition was evaluated, x was greater than 4. It was 5. So even though x changes its value here, that doesn't change this statement up here. All you care about is the value of x when this test condition is evaluated. If we change this test condition now, x greater than 4, this is true. So only the commands between if and else will be executed. So hello is printed. By, uh, and then and by is uh, printed and x, its value now has not changed. And it has the value of 5 still, because we ignored everything between the else and end. So let's change this to an if else if statement. Let's say else if x is greater than 2. Do these commands. And let's add another one. Else if x is greater than 0. Display hola. And x is equal to 1,000. Let's run this code. So let's see what happened. All three test conditions are true. x is equal to 5, so x is greater than 4. x is greater than 2. x is greater than 0. But notice that once we find a test condition that's true, we're only going to execute the commands underneath that if statement, and then we jump to the end of the if statement. And then we'll execute the commands afterwards. So we display hello, we display by, and display the value of x, which currently is 5. Doesn't matter if these test conditions are true or if a thousand different test conditions are true. As soon as we find one that's true, we'll jump to the end. Now, let's make the first test condition false, x less than 4, and see what happens. So x is equal to 5. This test condition is false, we go to the next one. x greater than 2? That's true. So we will display high. x will now have the value of 3. And because we found one test condition that's true, we'll jump to the end. And we uh, will then display by and the value of x, which has been changed to 3. Also notice that I did not include an else in this if else if statement. The else is optional. Let's add an else at the end and see how it works. Display ciao. So if we run the code now as is, we still get the same result. But let's make these all false. So we're changing the test conditions to make uh, to make the test conditions false. 
And we see now x is equal to 5. This is false, false, false. Oh, so we do whatever commands are after the else since these are all false. In this ca uh, case, display chow, then display by, and display x. Lastly, we'll look at nested if statements. I've already created one here for you um, where we look at two variables, x and y. So we have x is equal to 5, y is equal to 6. So we come to our first if statement. x greater than 4, that's true. y greater than 2, that's true. True or true will make a true. So we enter the if statement and we'll do everything between the if and else because this test condition is true. If x is equal to 6, is that true? It is. So we will display hello and not do anything between the else and end. So we'll display hello and jump to the end here. If there's any other commands, and we'll say display meow, for example, these will be executed. Once we reach the else, we will jump to the end because we have completed everything between if and else. So let's see how this works. Display hello, display meow, display bye. What if this test condition was not true? So let's say y is equal to 7. We know that to be false. So let's see what happens. So this, is, this first test condition is true, x is greater than 4 or y greater than 2, that's true. y equal to 7, false. So we'll skip bet everything between the if and else and jump to the stuff between else and end. Display high. That's what we have up here. We've come to the end of this end state, uh, if statement. We'll display meow. We've done everything between the if and else, and then we'll jump to the end and display by. What if this condition on the left was false and the entire test, condi test condition was false. So we see x less than 4. That's false. y greater than 2 is true, but if we have a false and a false, it makes a false. So we'll skip everything between if and else and only complete the commands between else and end. And we'll still, regardless of what happens in this if statement, we'll still display by. So we skip everything between if and else, display chow, then display by. Notice how this if statement right here, y is equal to 7, is completed by this end here. The if statement up here is completed by the end down here. This is just one simple example of where you can have nested if statements. If you like, you can put many if statements within a single if statement, or you can have if statements within if statements and within if statements, a thousand if statements within another thousand if statements.